Welcome back. In this video, we're going to define our first operation on vectors in R3, which we call the two-norm. To begin with, let's suppose that we have a vector that connects two points in R3. We'll call this vector x, and we'll say that it connects points P1 and P2, where P1 is the tail and P2 in the head. And each of these are points in R3, meaning that they are ordered triplets of real numbers. We want to define the two norm of this vector. The two norm of the vector will be written as the double vertical bars with a subscript 2. And this notation is read the two norm of x. To do so, we need to actually be able to visualize what's happening with these graphs. Here, I'm not going to use Mathematica because this visualization would take a long time to do in Mathematica. Let's suppose that this is the point P1, which was given by this ordered triplet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and write it very, very small underneath. The order triple here was x1, y1, z1. Okay. And then we had this other point, p2, which was kind of up away from us. And p2 had the order triplet x2, y2, z2. And the really interesting thing about this is this ordered triplet came from moving some distance along x, some distance along y, and some distance along z. So you can kind of see a box here where this thing is going to come back this way. Here, this is going to come back this way, going to go straight up. If you're following along at home, I would highly encourage you to create this diagram for yourself. The two norm is going to come from analyzing the different values along this diagram. Here we come up this way, come back, and then here we have a connection. And this is the vector, the one that comes right up out towards the diagonal of this box. Here, that's the vector x. Of course, we probably want to show that this box has dimensions to it. So you have to be a little bit of an artist. You can, we can actually define all the points on this box. And if we do so, we'll see something quite interesting. OK, if this is x1, y1, z1, and we'll call this the x direction and this the y direction. So here's this is the x direction. Here's the y direction. Based on the right-hand rule, this must be the positive z direction. To go from the x1 point here to this point, well, the x value of point 2 is going to be x2. So this would have x2 as the x value. The y value would still be y1, and the z value would still be z1. So that's this point right here. Over here, this point would have the same x value along this line, but the y value would be the y value of p2. So this would be x2, y2. The height would still be z1. And then to get up here, the height would be z2. What we see is we want to define the 2 norm as the length of x. To do this, I want to highlight that there's actually two 
right triangles here. We have one right triangle here and another right triangle here. I might call the length of this end A. We'll call the length of this leg B. We'll call the length of the diagonal along the xy plane here, we'll call that C. And then D, which is going to be the two norm of x, is right here. So to find the definition, the two norm of x, we can analyze both right triangles. Let's take a look at the first right triangle. The first right triangle looks like it has A along this length, B along this length, and then here we have C. And if we look at the individual points here, this point would be given by x1, excuse me, x2, y1, z1. That's what this point was. This point up here was the original point P1, which was x1, y1, z1. And then this point right here was x2, y2, z1. And what we see here is by the Pythagorean theorem, we know that the length of the hypotenuse of this right triangle is going to be given by the, the square of that length is going to be given by the sum of the squares of the lengths of the basis. Moreover, the length of A is going to be the amount of change between these two points. But look, the z coordinates are constant, the y coordinates are constant. The only thing that's changing is the x coordinate. And we can see that the length of this is going to be x2 minus x1. So here, x2 minus x1 is the length of A. The length of B, similarly, the x coordinates are constant. The z coordinates of constant, the only thing that changes is the length of, is the y value. So b would be y2 minus y1. So there was the first triangle. We can find the second triangle by looking back at our diagram. So moreover, in the second right triangle, we have a diagram that looks something like this. This was the point, or the value C. The height of this, perhaps we called Z. And then the length of the hypotenuse was going to be D. If we go back to this diagram, this is the exact triangle here, which is along the diagonal of the box. Here's z, here's c, here's d. We know by the Pythagorean theorem, well, first of all, we have to analyze that indeed this is a right triangle. We call this point x2, y2, z1. The point up here, which was p2, was x2, y2, z2. And if we looked at the original point here, this was point p1 which was x1, y1, z1. Well, we know by Pythagoras that the relationship between d, c, and z is that d squared is equal to c squared plus z squared. And we also know z, if we looked at z, z is the length of this piece. The x coordinates are constant. The y coordinates are constant. 
the only thing that's changing in the z coordinate is the value z2 minus z1. But we know that c was actually given by a squared plus b squared from our previous work. That's what we did up here. Okay. So now we ha we know the length of the vector is the length the sum of the squares of the vector. But the length of the vector was supposed to be the two norm of this vector. That's what d was supposed to be. So if you take the two norm squared, this was going to be a squared plus b squared plus z squared. And another way to say this is that the two norm squared, well, a was x2 minus x1 squared. b was y2 minus y1 squared. And c was, or z was, z2 minus z1 squared, which says that if I want to just solve for the two norm, I can take the square root on both sides. And we'll take the positive version, since magnitude, we hope, is a positive number. And then inside, we have x2 minus x1 squared, y2 minus y1 squared, z2 minus z1 squared. And of course, we said that this was for a vector that connects points p1 and p2, where p1 was the first point, the, the tail of our vector, and p2 was the head of our vector. Which means we have this algorithm, this formula, for the length of a vector that connects p1 and p2. And I want to show you if this is the origin, this equation simplifies because each of the x1s, y1s, and z1s would become 0, which is pretty amazing, isn't it? Let's take a look at an example of how to use this formula. So we actually just derived this formula thinking about the Pythagorean theorem. For those of you following along at home, I hope you drew those diagrams and followed along. If you need more help, go ahead and rewind this video. Let's take a look at an example, as I promised, of how to use this information to find distances. So please find the two norm, the length, the magnitude of a vector x, where x is the vector that connects points p and q. And each point p and q is defined in the problem. So here p would be 2, negative 1, 7. And then q is 1, negative 3, 5. Let's go ahead and solve this problem. All right. We start with the definition of x. To find the components in x. Well, we know that x was p to q, which means if I write these by components, I'm going to take the component of q, first component of uh, first coordinate of q and subtract the first coordinate of p. I'm going to take the second coordinate of q and subtract the second coordinate of p, and then I'm going to take the third coordinate of q and subtract the third coordinate of p. And now I get a vector negative 1 negative 2 negative 2. So now this is my vector x. Unless I'm specifically told that p has, that, excuse me, that x has tail p, I could assume that this vector starts at the origin. In this case, I'm told that it has tail p, so I have to kind of be aware of that. But remember that this is a non-unique representation of a vector. 
Well, we just saw that when we take the 2 norm of this vector, the 2 norm is the sum of the squares of the components. In this case, we already know what the components are. This is negative 1 squared plus negative 2 squared plus negative 2 squared, which we know is 1 plus 4 plus 4. And eventually, we're going to take the square root. This is the square root of 9, which is 3. One thing that I want to say is we've actually suppressed the work done here. If you looked at the definition of the 2 norm, so if you looked at the formal definition of the 2 norm that we just derived in the last part of this video, the formal definition required that we took x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. That's exactly what we've done here. x2 minus x1 is 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. y2 minus y1 is negative 3 minus negative 1. z2 minus z1 is 5 minus 7. And then we just square each of those components to get the 2 norm. In the next video, we'll chat about the vector operations of addition and scalar multiplication in R3. See you there.